Hey everyone, this is Zach with 8020 Media here today with a video on how to build a 350 horsepower BMW N20. Before we jump into the bulk of this video and jump into all of the specific modifications, there are a few quick housekeeping notes to knock out and discuss with the BMW N20 engine. So there are two different designations and really two different engine codes for the N20, including obviously the N20 itself, which is an ultra low emissions vehicle or ULEV for short. And there's also the N26 engine code and designation, which is the super ultra low emissions vehicle designation or SULEV for short. And ultimately, just something to point out quickly, the difference when modding these engines, there really isn't anything different. They're both mechanically identical, just a few small changes for emissions purposes. So ultimately, not much of a difference there. So just wanted to point out anything that we discuss here involving the N20 does also apply to the BMW N26 engine code. It just comes down to some emissions differences. But ultimately, when modifying the vehicle and shooting for additional horsepower, there isn't really any significant change between the two engines. Now on to a couple more important notes. There is one big differentiation between BMW N20 engines, and that is electronic wastegates or EWG versus pneumatic wastegates or PWG. So BMW initially used a PWG design on the N20. Those pneumatic wastegates were then changed to electronic wastegates in roughly mid-2013. So really any 2014 plus N20 engine should be EWG. The EWG models with the electronic wastegate control Ultimately, they have better boost control due to better control over the wastegates, and they're able to hold a little bit more boost higher into the rev range. So ultimately, when you look at modifying these engines, the later 2014 plus EWG models typically fare a little bit better, and mod for mod will end up about 20 wheel horsepower higher than the earlier PWG models. So just something to keep in mind as we move through the mods and discuss all of the BMW N20 upgrades in this video, that the later 20. 14 plus models with the electronic wastegates are going to be a little bit more capable than the earlier PWG models. As a quick side note, the BMW 20i models have a lower output variant of the N20. Now they are just as capable as the higher power variants. They're simply going to have a lower starting point when you are modding the engine. And so as such, those 20i models are going to show even more impressive power gains. That said, let's go ahead and jump into the bulk of this video and actually discuss the five best BMW N20 upgrades to push the engine to 350 plus crank horsepower. Number one on the list, jumping right into the best upgrade for the BMW N20, we have tuning. A tune is really the key to unlocking the full potential of the BMW N20. Just a tune alone can provide gains of roughly 30 to 50 wheel horsepower and 40 to 60 wheel torque. So for a $500 tune, those are incredible power gains, and this is going to be the best bang for your buck modification on the BMW N20. Additionally, a tune helps maximize the power gains from additional modifications. It's important to properly account and adjust for any changes such as downpipe or intake upgrade. So having a tune will allow for those proper adjustments and ultimately maximize the power gains from those additional mods. So when it comes to a tune for the BMW N20, there are really two common tuning options, and that is going to be the Burger Motorsports JB4 as well as the Boot Mod 3 or BM3 Flash Tune. They're both great options and ultimately will provide similar power gains and similar benefits. However, one major difference is the JB4 is a piggyback tune, whereas the Boot Mod 3 is a flash tune. So the way that these different tuners actually tune the vehicle are very different. So it really just comes down to personal preference and what you're looking for. Moving on to number two on the list, we have an upgraded intake for the N20 inline four turbo engine. An intake is going to show minimal to no power gains. It's really not that impressive of a modification on the N20. That's especially true at stock boost levels. The factory intake is plenty efficient. So upgrading the intake likely won't show any power gains on a stock engine. However, as you do tune and start increasing the boost, that does put more demanding airflow requirements on the engine. So an intake could help pick up a couple horsepower, but again, you're really not going to see much out of an intake. Now there is still a good reason that we're mentioning on this list. An intake does add some awesome turbo and induction sounds. 
It's incredibly cheap. An intake is usually about $150 to $250. Cheap upgrade, it's super simple to install. It can help clean up the engine bay and make future maintenance and repairs easier. Ultimately, an intake is a great addition, even if you're only picking up a couple horsepower or again, possibly even nothing. Still has a couple benefits and is something that we'd certainly include on the list of N20 modifications as being one of the best. At number three on the list, we have a downpipe upgrade for the BMW N20 engine. Following a tune, a downpipe is likely the next best bang for your buck upgrade. A downpipe is going to run a few hundred dollars, somewhere in that $250 to $400 price point, maybe a little bit more if you get into catted options. Fairly cheap upgrade as well and a downpipe can show power gains of about 10 to 20 wheel horsepower and pretty similar torque, maybe even a little bit more and closer to that kind of 15 to 20 wheel torque ballpark. Incredibly impressive gains for a few hundred dollar mod. Additionally, on top of that, there are additional benefits to a downpipe upgrade. You'll also notice faster turbo spool. A downpipe makes the turbo's job a little bit easier to build boost and hold that boost. And it also reduces back pressure, which takes stress off of the engine. And it's typically, safer and healthier for the engine and turbocharger itself. One thing to mention with downpipes, there is one big differentiation between downpipe upgrades for the N20 engine, and that's going to be a catless downpipe versus a high flow catted downpipe. So as the name suggests, a catless downpipe completely deletes the catalytic converter, not legal for street driven cars, and you'll have trouble passing any form of emissions or visual inspections. Even if you don't have to hook up to a sniff test during a visual inspection, chances are the mechanic is going to notice that there is no catalytic converter in place and that will result in an instant fail even just from that simple visual inspection. So that's really the biggest downside to the catless downpipe. On the other hand, the benefits to a catless downpipe, the ultimate goal with the downpipe upgrade is to reduce back pressure. The catless option is going to do the best job at that, so it's going to offer the most impressive power gains, the best turbo spool, and really the best benefits overall. It's also going to be cheaper, but again, it really just comes with the flaw of being illegal and hard to pass any sort of emissions or visual inspections. So that's where a high flow catted downpipe comes into play for the BMW N20. As the name suggests here, a high flow catted downpipe does still have a catalytic converter, just a high flow catalytic converter. And so you will still be able to pass any sort of visual inspection, any emissions inspections or sniff tests. So that's the benefit of a high flow catted downpipe. It's a little less capable than a catless downpipe, but you're still gonna get all the great benefits, maybe five wheel horsepower less than a catless option. And it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but again, with the benefit of not having to worry about any sort of failures during inspections or emissions testing. So ultimately there isn't a right or wrong answer there, it just depends on what you're looking for and what you're willing to sacrifice in a downpipe upgrade. Moving on to the fourth best N20 upgrade, we have a front mount intercooler upgrade. A front mount intercooler or FMIC for short, isn't going to provide the biggest peak power gains on a glory run. You may see gains of about five to 10 wheel horsepower, maybe not even that much if you do a single dyno pull with the stock intercooler and then a single pull with an upgraded intercooler, you might not see that big of a power difference. However, the factory intercooler, when you start increasing boost, becomes incredibly prone to heat soak. That means your intake air temperatures start increasing. The engine's ultimately going to start pulling out ignition timing, and that is going to result result in power loss. So that's really the main benefit of an intercooler upgrade is the fact that you get very consistent performance and it prevents you from losing power. A more efficient intercooler essentially helps keep those intake air temperatures in check. It helps mitigate against the risk of heat soak and losing power from that. So again, that consistent performance is really the number one benefit to an intercooler upgrade. And you may still see some small peak gains even on glory runs of five to 10 wheel horsepower, but ultimately it can prevent you from losing 10, 20, 25 plus wheel horsepower after you do multi-gear pulls or if you do back-to-back -back pulls that's when that heat soak is really going to start kicking in on the factory intercooler and, and really just start sapping power. Another benefit to those cooler intake temps is that does also reduce the chance of any engine knock or detonation. So ultimately much safer and healthier for the engine. So intercooler upgrades, certainly something we recommend, especially if you're looking to start pushing to 
18 to 20 plus pounds of boost and an intercooler is one of the best upgrades. Moving on to number five, we have E85 or ethanol blends. So specifically here, we're talking about E30 or a 30% ethanol blend. When you're running E30 fueling, that's about the maximum the N20 can safely handle on most off the shelf tunes. I know the JB4 offers a map for E30 fueling. I believe Boot Mod 3 also offers an E30 tuning map, both off the shelf tunes included with those devices. So if you have access to E85, you can simply mix about 30% ethanol or E85 into your tank to end up at that E30 blend. The real benefit here, why this is a performance upgrade, Ethanol has a very high octane rating. It's 100 plus octane. It burns much cooler than gasoline and it requires more fuel flow. So by injecting more fuel into the cylinders, you reduce the chance of engine knock and detonation. And so that's what really allows you to pick up the extra power. You can run additional ignition timing. You can run more aggressive ignition advance without running into the risk of engine knock and detonation. So that's where you're gonna pick up a lot of the power. Now just running an E30 blend can show power gains of about 10 to 20 wheel horsepower on the N20. And if you do have easy access to ethanol or E85, it's incredibly easy, it's free. The cost of E85 is about the same cost as, as lower octane, like 85, 87 octane fuel. So ultimately free upgrade if you do have easy access to E85, put a little in the tank. And again, you can see power gains of about 10 to 20 wheel horsepower with an E30 blend. That wraps up our five best modifications for the BMW N20 to push the engine again to about 350 crank horsepower. So with all these mods, again, a tune, intake, downpipe, intercooler, and an E30 blend, you can expect to end up in about the 290 to 310 wheel horsepower ballpark and about 325 to 350 wheel torque. If you opt for something like custom tuning, you might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of the engine, but ultimately those are re reasonable numbers that many people can expect and achieve just with those simple bolt-ons. That wraps up our video for today, guys. If you appreciated the content, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the description below for more awesome content. Thanks, guys.